major section of chapter five deals with sex uh, influence and how um, how the sex of an individual can actually influence the inheritance patterns of certain genes and the expression of phenotypes. So um, if, within this chapter, we're going to look at four major things. We're going to look at characteristics that are sex influenced or sex limited. Um, we're going to look at cytoplasmic inheritance as well as um, the genetic maternal effect and um, genomic imprinting as well. All right, so first let's start with uh, traits that are influenced by the sex of the individual. The classic example of this is the appearance of beards in goats. So if a goat has a beard, it's, this is actually determined by an autosomal gene. So it's a gene that is not on the sex chromosome. And the, the two major forms of the gene are B plus or BB. And um, the B, little b, is going to be dominant in males, but recessive in females. So think about that for just a second. So the B, little b genotype is going to be dominant in males, but recessive in females. So if we look at um, our inheritance patterns here, and we take a beardless male that's homozygous B+, cross him with a bearded female that is homozygous B, little b, then in that F1 generation, there, we're going to get 100% of those individuals are going to have the genotype uh, B+, plus, uh, B, little b, but if they're male, they're going to have a beard, and if they're female, they're not going to have a beard, but their genotypes are the same. So this is the part of the this chapter that starts blowing people's minds, so just stick with it. So males um, are only going to have one copy, um, and as long as they have that one copy of the allele, then they are going to express the express the trait. So in this case, uh, big B, little b is the codes for the beard. And whether it shows up in heterozygous form or homozygous form, as long as the individual is a male, it's going to have a beard. And females, this trait is going to be recessive. So in order for her to express the phenotype of having a beard, she actually has to be homozygous recessive or have the big B, little b genotype um, in both alleles. So keep in mind that even though the F1 is the same genotype, or in this case both heterozygous, um, the males are going to be bearded, but the females are not. So then what happens as we move into the F2 generation? If we let the F1 generation interbreed with each other, um, like we've been doing in the plant examples, then the F2 gen generation gets complex really quickly. And you can see that in the lower portion of uh, this schematic here. So the heterozygotes are going to behave way differently um, depending on what the gender is. So we see lots of different ratios um, here. And you can kind of work through these, but all of our males are going to be, um, or half of our males are going to be, um, sorry, not half, three quarters of the males are going to be bearded, and a quarter of the males are not, are going to be beardless. And on the female side, um, a quarter of the females are only are going to be bearded. So the trait's going to act very differently depending on what sex it's expressed in. So as we are um, working our way through the interaction between sex and heredity, just keep in mind that the effects of the sex hormone um, on the gene um, is going to affect gene expression. So the classic example of this is a male pattern baldness, baldness, and this is actually induced by the presence of testosterone. So we can see an inheritance pattern just looking at the Adams family. Um, and so the pattern baldness um, was inherited from generation to generation, but it's long been thought that this was actually linked to the X chromosome. And what we found is that it is not. It's actually a gene on an autosome or an allele on an autosome that is going to be dominant in males but recessive in females. So male pattern baldness is not linked to the X chromosome. 
So in terms of the phenotype, um, both men and the women can inherit the gene, but depending on what sex it's being expressed in gives very different phenotypic ratios. So men just need one copy to be bald. So that's why we see a pretty large incidence of males that are bald. And then um, women actually need two copies. And even then, um, it really only amounts to thinning. So balding is going to be enhanced by the presence of testosterone because we've never really seen like a bald 10-year-old, right? So male pattern baldness is going to be... Um, affected by testosterone when it is converted to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. And so that enzyme that does this conversion process is a reductase and the um, presence of the enzyme actually is what kills your hair follicles. So if you have that genotype that um, creates that reductase enzyme, then you it's going to kill your hair follicles and you may be um, bald if you're a male or have thinning hair if you're a female. So there are some cures for it. We've actually developed products that inhibit the reductase enzyme to prevent um, prevent baldness. Um, and then there's a, a time-tested uh, solution as well, but I do not recommend it, but it's actually castration. So um, as long as you disrupt the conversion of testosterone by the reductase enzyme, then the hair follicle will not actually um, be killed. So the just taking away the testosterone can do that. All right, so some extreme examples of um, sex influence traits are going to be uh, sex limited traits. So the sex limited traits are going to be encoded by only autosomal genes. So um, sex genes aren't going to be associated with this at all. And these traits are going to be expressed in one gender and not usually both. So there tends to be um, very little penetrance into the other gender. All right, and we'll pick up with some um, other sex-limited traits in the next segment.